And we begin this Sunday morning with America's national security and the threat of communist China. As Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is now in Beijing today for high-level diplomatic talks with the Chinese Communist Party. Blinken making the trip despite increasing aggression from China toward America, including most recently a surveillance spy balloon flying freely over the continental United States, including hovering over military sites and sending military secrets back to Beijing in real time, operating a spy base in Cuba to surveil the United States and secret police stations across the country, while also harassing our military in Asia and exploiting Biden's wide-open southern border, with apprehensions of Chinese nationals now up 1,300 percent in the last year. All of this after more confirmation this week of what Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton told us first on this program back in February of 2020, that COVID-19 likely escaped from the Wuhan lab. As journalists Michael Schellenberger and Matt Taibbi identified the first people sickened with COVID-19 symptoms, who were the scientists at the Wuhan Institute of Virology working on gain-of-function research at the time. Even worse, the U.S. may have funded it all. This week, the Nonpartisan Government Accountability Office reports the U.S. sent at least $2 million to fund several Chinese research labs between 2014 and 2021, including the Wuhan Institute, which oversaw the gain-of-function experiments, where it likely leaked and infected the world. Joining me right now to talk about all of that is the ranking member of the Senate Homeland Security Committee. A man who has been probing all of this from the early days of COVID, the breakout. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul with me right now. Senator, great to see you this morning. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, let's talk about all that we learned this week in the face of this Anthony Blinken trip. First off, what are you expecting from the trip uh, by our Secretary of State to Beijing? You know, I think despite our differences and despite the ratcheting up of rhetoric, I think diplomacy is important. And so all throughout the Cold War, we tried to have diplomacy with Russia. We should continue to have diplomacy with China. I think we should have ongoing arms control talks. Even despite all of the things and all of the complaints, look, I've had a lot of complaints about the leak from the lab, but there's a lot of discussions and ongoing diplomacy that needs to occur. So I actually wish Blinken well, and I'm glad he's making the trip. So tell us about the news this week where these journalists have identified the first people sickened uh, in the Wuhan lab. Those scientists obviously are dead right now. What are your thoughts? This is a big deal. This is an article by Michael Schellenberger and Matt Taibbi. And in it, and Alan Gutentag, in the article, they revealed that the first people to get sick from COVID were three scientists that they worked in the Wuhan lab with the bat scientist, Dr. Xi. In fact, one of them, the one they think that was the first scientist to get sick, the first person to get sick, was one of the ones creating these new viruses, viruses not found in nature. This is the gain of function research. And so this essentially closes the deal. What I'm going to try to pursue now is whoever revealed this, if there is documentation of this, it's all supposed to be declassified tomorrow. And that legislation passed unanimously. If we can get that, if we can get those records and actually put it out there for all the public to see that the first person that got sick was a scientist at the lab, then it's a done deal. We know it came from the lab and everybody can just admit it, but then we can move to the reform. The reform is we shouldn't be funding this kind of research in China, but we also shouldn't be funding this kind of research in the United States. Well, I mean, did we fund this? Did we fund the beginnings of, of, of this disease? Yeah, and I think we share responsibility, you know. So I met with the Chinese embassy about a month ago, and I asked them for help on this. And we have had one person in China now, the former head of the CDC, George Gao, has admitted that a lab leak is a possibility. What I would say to China, if I were on the trip with Blinken, is that there's a shared responsibility. The U.S. government funded this, the U.S. government advocates for this, and an accident happened. If you'll be forthcoming with us and let us know that those scientists were the first to get sick, they have to know this by now. If they're forthcoming with it, we could move on in a cooperative way because we can't make China have rules on gain of function, although they have passed some new rules in their country. But what we need is an international consortium of countries that will voluntarily agree to restrict this. The United States needs to restrict this. There are people estimating that the next time this happens, the next time we have a leak from a lab, that between five and 50% of the population could die from another man-made virus. So this is very, very serious. This is up there with nuclear arms control. This is up there with the danger of nuclear war. But this is much more insidious. It's harder to trace. But still, millions of people can die from a man-made man virus. 
But we all know that Communist China covered it up initially. How are you going to get the truth now? They won't even allow an investigation into the Wuhan lab. Yeah, it's not easy, and they haven't been forthcoming. I think the only way to convince them is that it won't all be about blaming them because we participated in funding this. The blame equally should go not only to Chinese authorities, but to Anthony Fauci and all those who advocated for this. But there has to be a reassessment. Look, Bill Gates has been over there recently. Bill Gates is the largest funder of trying to find these viruses in remote caves and bring them to big cities. So what happened in China is they went eight to 10 hours south of Wuhan, two to 300 feet deep into a, la into a cave, found viruses and took them back to a city of 15 million. There are many, many scientists who think that Bill Gates is wrong in funding this, that our government's wrong, that the Chinese government, that really we don't need to be searching for viruses that may never interact with man. And it's worse than that. They bring viruses that we may never interact with. They bring them back to the lab, but then they manipulate them by combining them with other viruses to create viruses that don't exist in nature. But this has largely been funded by Bill Gates. He, he funds the WHO more than most countries do. So there's a responsibility there, and I don't think he's not, I think he's well intended, but I think he's inadvertently helped to create something that the biggest danger to mankind right now is something that he's been funding, and that is finding these viruses, taking them back to the lab, and manipulating them to make them more dangerous. Wow. I mean, look, we can talk about this now freely, but back in the early days, in the peak days of COVID-19, God forbid you said anything about any of this, you were canceled. Social media uh, and, and the mainstream media wouldn't allow you to push back on anything uh, against uh, China and uh, the, the COVID-19 uh, originating there. What about Anthony Fauci's accountability and the media complicit? What we know is from the very first days of the pandemic in January of 2020, that Anthony Fauci orchestrated a, an elaborate cover-up. He knew there was a problem. At three in the morning, he was emailing somebody on January 31st, and that person was head of the committee that was supposed to review dangerous research, the P3CO committee, the potential uh, pandemic pathogens. It was supposed to look at this dangerous research, but Fauci allowed it to go around that. So he knew from the very beginning, not only was he funding the Wuhan research, but he was going around the regulatory apparatus to let it happen, even though the rules said it shouldn't have happened without more scrutiny. So he knew this from the beginning, and it was an active cover-up. He actively got papers placed that were not valid papers into, into large scientific journals. So yes, there was a cover-up from the very beginning, but a real judgment error. And this is a man, Anthony Fauci, who said in 2012 that this kind of research to create new virus was so important that even if a pandemic should take place, that it'd be worth the knowledge. I think there's several million people, particularly a million Americans, who would question whether that was good judgment or not. So yeah. whether or not he was um, some you know, poor judgment or not, it was an incredibly bad decision to fund this research. Yeah, and I know you're waiting on more information after you sent the letter to the head of the HHS, uh, Honorable uh, Javier Becerra. We'll wait for uh, when you have more information uh, as a result of those letters. Senator, good to see you this morning. Thanks very much. Thank you. Senate Homeland Security Ranking Member Senator Rand Paul. Thank you.